This is vlog number two for the module Practical Techniques in Strength and Conditioning. The following vlog shall discuss two athletes performing derivatives of acceleration and agility. They come in the form of a wall drive, uh, which helps the athlete in their ability to generate force uh, during the stance phase of acceleration. Uh, I shall also discuss deceleration, which is essential in order to decrease the velocity of the athlete before they change direction, either laterally, horizontally or vertically. Uh, the two athletes in question are from the sport of rugby and a developmental uh, American football player uh, who have not been exposed to this type of modality of training before. The first athlete is performing a wall drive. We can see here he's able to get into a horizontal position at approximately 45 degrees. Um, some of the key technical aspects we're looking for is the ability of the athlete to have a high knee position, um, also dorsiflexion or a neutral position of the, the foot, uh, whereby he is able to create tension in the muscle tendinous unit uh, of the gastroc and the Achilles, um, where he prepares the lower limb for optimal ground contact. Um, he was able to strike under his hips, um, thus creating a good touchdown distance from his striking foot uh, in relation to his centre of mass and maintained full extension of the acromelius hip as well as maintain his trunk position or, or, or stabilisation of his trunk. However, there's a lack of knee drive uh, when performing the drill. There may be capacity issues uh, whereby he was unable to have a lack of mobility around the hip flexors uh, or a skill issue. Coaching interventions uh, to address knee issues, I gave him an external cue to, to punch your knees up towards the sky or punch them forwards. Uh, this cue was quite effective, um, as, as we'll see. Uh, in the second attempt, he was able to get into a much better position, um, whereby he had a much higher knee drive. After I was happy uh, with the athlete's ability to punch forward with the knee, and progressed him to three repeated actions, um, which you can see here, he was very effective in, in executing this skill. He's able to maintain good posture through the trunk uh, and the lower limbs, uh, as well as good knee drive and maintaining um, a neutral position with his foot. To establish these motor patterns, uh, I would embed sprint mechanics within his warm-up, um, doing other kind of derivatives, uh, like sort of A-marches, A-skips, um, anchoring, etc. Um, this was something that I discussed with him, uh, and also discussed it with his technical coach as well, um, just to try and establish these motor patterns and, and better running mechanics. Um, it's something that they've not done before um, and I thought it was a, a, a good opportunity to do so prior to his uh, on pitch sessions and um, just to try and establish good motor patterns. The second athlete is unable to get into an optimal position as we can see here. Um, he's not in a very good horizontal position in terms of his lower limbs in line with his trunk. Um, I did uh, some, uh, or I did some uh, coaching cues in relation to getting the athlete fully extended. I asked him to jam his shoulders down towards his hips with his chest up and out and his chin up. However, we can see here he's still unable to maintain any postural control with quite a lot of thoracic flexion. Uh, his position, he's also got poor positioning with his foot being in a more kind of plantar flexion position. Um, this is coupled by a low rate of force development whereby the athlete uh, has a strategy whereby uh, he keeps his limbs uh, on the ground longer in order to generate impulse uh, to propel his knee forward, which is not very effectively. Um, second attempt, um, again, I gave him some coaching cues, but again, he was still in a very poor position, um, unable to maintain any kind of um, trunk control uh, as well as not able to extend his hips with knee flexion, also apparent on his standing leg. 
uh, he did he was able to generate a little bit more force through the ground but that was at the expense of, of his control uh, to the trunk as well um, he's hemorrhaging force basically uh, and I, I really think this is a, a capacity issue with the athlete he's just not strong enough really uh, to apply force uh, effectively I also performed a static knee dip assessment assessing the potential stiffness or weaknesses in his glutes uh, he was unable to maintain his pelvis to be in line with his shoulders also demonstrated poor trunk control uh, which indicated weak glutes, uh, both medial and maximal, uh, and weaknesses through his extenders of his trunk. Um, some programming strategies for the athlete would be in the weight room, focusing on maximal strength work, both bilateral and unilateral exercises, focusing on posterior chain exercises, squat derivatives, um, bridges, both unloaded and loaded, eccentric hamstring work, uh, as well as some um, track work as well for this particular athlete looking at running mechanics. As previously discussed, acceleration is essential or deceleration sorry, is essential in order to decrease the velocity of the athlete before they change direction. Uh, the athlete was instructed to be in a ready position uh, and in relation to the technical model, therefore he had a pretty good forward lean position. Um, he was asked and instructed to accelerate uh, and decelerate and stop at a given point which was at the green line. Um, the athlete uh, was unable to do so or certainly wasn't able to stop at a given point and um, so I, I feel he didn't generate enough contact time on the ground um, using his, his heel as a break uh, and some of the, the coaching cues I gave him was to, to, to um, decrease his, uh, sorry, increase his cadence um, put most of the force through, through his heels. In the second attempt, however, the athlete decelerates, maintains ground contact time for as long as possible, uh, maximising the braking force, getting his body in an optimal position, putting his shoulders in front of his hips, uh, with his foot behind uh, and ready to produce a forward force, which he's able to do here. Um, therefore, uh, after this intervention, um, I would do some block practice with the athlete um, and then look at different um, block drills, um, the likes of cutting left, right, 180 degree turns, um, and followed by some open uh, skills. The second athlete was given the same instructions um, and was asked to stop again uh, at a given point, being the green line here. As you can see, he's not in an optimal position at all. Um, he's unable to decelerate in time. Um, he's also leaning backwards, whereby his shoulders are behind his hips and he's not in a position to do anything differently. He'd have to change his whole body position uh, in order to change direction. Um, he's not in an optimal position, um, but I had to figure out whether it was a capacity or a skill related issue. Judging by his previous kind of wall drills, I, I, I presumed or I thought they would be actually capacity related issues as opposed to skill related. However, I, I did give him some coaching cues in terms of um, increasing his cadence, putting his weight, uh, his distribution through heels, so it's acting as, as a breaking force. Um, as a second attempt, um, was slightly better um, after some coaching cueing and increasing his heel strike and his cadence. Uh, and as well as trying to get into a ready position um, when he finished um, but he was still unable to, to decelerate in time um, he was still pretty unstable um, although his, his shoulders are almost in front of his hips um, he's still not in a, an absolutely great position he still have to change his body position to get into or, 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 or change direction. Um, for this athlete, I, 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 I would suggest there's a lack of eccentric strength, um, there's an ability to apply braking forces as well as a lack of postural control. Again, as per the acceleration drills, I would prescribe some weight uh, exercises uh, looking at max strength uh, training. 